friends welcome to my workplace at Ranagha West Bengal India in this video I am going to show two routine phaco surgeries this is the first case this is the main incision with the 2.8 millimeter steel keratome the microscope doesn't have stereo coaxial system and red glow is poor but still we can do rexis without using tripan blue dye how apply some visco over the cornea and visibility improves a lot and we can see the anterior capsule very clearly this is a side port about three clock hours away from the main incision when the side port is three clock hours away from the main wound astigmatism induced by the main wound is neutralized to some extent by the side port and if the width of the side port is little more neutralization is also little more now rexis is being done with the help of a uh, uterita forceps there was no problem at all I could see the anterior capsule very clearly and rexis is done this is an adequate size rexis of about 5.5 millimeter now hydro dissection is done as soon as the fluid wave reaches from one point of the equator to the opposite point of the equator injection of BSAS is stopped hydro delineation is done nucleus is tapped and little attempt to rotate the nucleus is done but in this case my plan is to rotate the nucleus after aspirating some superficial cortical lens matter with the FECO needle now the tip of the FECO needle goes in some superficial cortical lens matter is removed and then the nucleus is rotated nicely now the handpiece is turned to make the bevel up you can see that the exposed part of the FECO needle is not much when the cataract is soft we don't need exposure of much exposure of the FECO needle this much exposure about 2 or 2.5 millimeter exposure is enough this nucleus is brittle and soft I could hold the nucleus gently with applying a low vacuum and the nucleus is managed and now epinuclear shell is thick it has to be mobilized very carefully PC rent may occur if you go posteriorly to hold the epinucleus so always remain anteriorly just at the level of the anterior capsular rim so the epinucleus is removed a portion of the cortex also has been removed by the FECO needle and now I'm going to use a 23G Simco cannula to remove cortex this is a 23 gauze Simco cannula and the cortical cleanup can be done very easily with this we can we have e made only one side port so we cannot use bimanual ligation aspiration we can use hybrid aspiration and now I'm going to enlarge the main wound a little bit the 2.8 millimeter wound becomes about 3 millimeter and we can use a B cartridge to implant the intraocular lens the leading haptic goes into the capsular bag 
and just by a tap of the left hand instrument the trailing haptic also goes into the capsular bag this is the irrigating proof we have not used visco in this case for implantation of the intraocular lens so the antechamber is clear now the side port is closed by hydrating corneal stroma on either side of this paracentesis wound and now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber the antechamber is cleaned nicely the bag is also cleaned nicely and now the antechamber is formed very well the intraocular pressure is kept on the higher side of the normal and then the case is concluded and now let us see this case by this time the main incision side port has been made visco has been injected into the anterior chamber visco has been applied over the cornea and now rexis is being done the rexis is being done with the help of this uterator forceps red glow is not good but we can see the capsule very clearly because of application of some visco over the cornea and we can do rexis another way is to apply tripan blue dye to stain the anterior capsule and do rexis so if we don't have stereo coaxial microscope this is the way hydrodissection is done the nucleus is mobilized visco is injected in the anterior chamber and now the tip of the phaco needle goes in the machine being used is Oakley Cataract 3 the phaco needle goes in some cortical lens matter is removed and then the nucleus is rotated clockwise as well as anti-clockwise and now the handpiece is turned with the help of the left hand and the bevel is up towards the cornea now nucleus sclerosis is about grade 2 or grade 2 plus and we can easily chop these nuclei using very low vacuum just it's a little vacuum to hold the nucleus and just chop the nucleus into pieces each nuclear fragment is emulsified immediately after chopping in such routine soft cataracts but in hard cataracts we should chop all the fragments first and then start emulsifying the pieces this is the epinucleus at this time stability of the anterior chamber should be more so I have removed the chopper and now some visco is injected in the anterior chamber there is only one side port so either we have to use a coaxial IA or this instrument this is a 23G Simco cannula. Advantage of this instrument is it goes through the side port. And we can remove the subincisional cortex very easily in this way. But when it is a coaxial IA, sometimes we have difficulty in removing the subincisional cortex.
and now the wound is enlarged a little bit and then uh, hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens is implanted in the capsular back this is hydro implantation means the antechamber is made stable by continuous irrigation and the lens goes in the capsular back whatever visco was there in the lumen of the cartridge is being cleaned now just by irrigation it comes out and now this is closure of the sideboard hydration of corneal stroma on either side of this stab wound and this small wound closes now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber at this time whatever visco is there sticking to the corneal endothelium comes out the bag is also cleaned pure BS BSS is used for the final lavage and here it is integrity of the wounds are checked the intraocular pressure is felt a uh, few drops of moxie is applied over the cornea and then the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love respect empathy and great surgical competence